Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 13th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. This tutorial we'll be adding in a candle as well as a table and we'll be able to pick the candle up and hold it in our hand. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. And you can also find all the scripts and assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, lighting has been our focus for the last couple of tutorials, I would say. And it's going to continue into this one as well. Now, the idea of what we want to do is we want to create uh, a table here. And we want to have a candle on it. And we want to be able to pick that candle up. Now, it sounds like there's not a lot to do in this tutorial. However, the mechanics of getting all that to work and getting everything in place will take longer than you would think. But once you've got it in place, it means that the, you can then reuse that kind of um, way of doing things to, to do other things. And we've sort of got there already when it comes to the door that we have over this side of the corridor. And we can use a very, very similar theory to actually achieve what we want to do here. So firstly, let's bring in the assets that we need. Uh, let's go to our object assets folder, and I'm going to bring in two folders. One is a candle, one is a wooden table. And you can head over and download these assets for free. If you go to the pinned comment, go to the link there, download it for free. And it's also in the description if you need to get it there. So here we have uh, the candle and the wooden table. And the great thing about this is they contain prefabs. And I've kind of spoken about prefabs before, and it makes things easier because you can just basically import them straight into your game. So for example, let's go to our wooden table and we can see here that, yeah, this wooden table has bits and pieces to it, uh, but we can just drag and drop into our scene. Let's increase the size, uh, maybe 50. 50 seems a bit too big, doesn't it? So let's try 20 by 20 by 20. That might be too small, but either way, let's bring it upwards. Let's rotate it by 90 degrees and let's place it against the wall. That should do round about there. So next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this texture is applied correctly to it. So we go to our materials folder and you can see that that's supposed to be it there. So if we go to our table, go down and click on default, that's the main object. We just need to drag and drop that texture onto a table and there we go and we can play around with this table if we want to you know we can change how metallic it looks but why would you want to it's wood change how smooth it looks change its um coloring per se you know it's entirely up to you i'm going to leave it as it is like that for now last thing we want to do is we want to add a collider to it because if we were to try and walk into it we'd just walk straight through it much like we did with some of the other objects so add component Let's go to physics and let's just add a bog standard box collider because we don't need anything sophisticated for this. We just need the player to not walk through. So there's our table. What goes on the table? The candle. So let's go to our candle folder and let's drag and drop the candle into our scene. You can see already that the candle is emitting light. That's the joy of having a prefab. So it looks good. Nice. Next thing we need to do is we also need to put the candle inside our player. The idea is that we need to turn off this candle and turn on the candle that's in our hand. We don't need to move this candle per se, and a lot of games do that. They have multiple versions of the object just in different places and activate them when they need to be activated. So let's go to our player capsule and let's drag and drop the candle onto there as well. Uh, let's go to our game view, split it out, and Let's snap it to the side here, if it will let me. Let's try that again, shall we? Let's snap it to the side here so we can get a side-by-side -side view of our scene and our uh, game view. And let's move this candle into a position that we can see it in the correct place. Do you understand what I mean? We're moving this here because we want the candle to be seen as though we're holding our hand here. So we can kind of move it around a little bit, maybe about there. If it'll let me drag it up, it won't let me. Why not let me drag up? It's not letting me drag it up. Let's try that again. There we go. So probably something like that. So now let's snap the game view back up here. So we just need to move it to the left just a little bit. I moved it too far. Silly me. Let's see how that looks. Tiny bit more. It's all about precision. You take the time to do it as you need to. Look, that'll do for me. 
So now I'm going to press play. Yes, we're going to have two candles in the scene, but let's just see how this looks in the scene first. It depends whether we need to change any of our light settings, because obviously this emits light. So do we need to change it? Well, first things first, we need to change the actual object the candle is on, which is fine. It needs to go on the camera route. Let's try that again, shall we? So obviously we've got the candle on the table, candle in our hand. And when it finally loads, there we go. So we can move around with the candle and you can see how it, the light is impacting as we move. Perfect. So next thing to do is turn off this candle in our hand. So turn it off up here by unticking. Next thing we need to do is we need to create the mechanism that will allow us to effectively pick up this candle and make it seem as though it's then been transferred to our hand. Now, in order to do that, as I mentioned earlier, we can use a similar method to what we used with the metal door. So I'm going to go over to the metal door. And if you remember it, we have this script metal door here, and that determines whether we're looking at it and what we're doing. So in order to do that, let's go to that metal door. Let's hold control and press D on that script so it creates a duplicate. And let's rename this to candle pick up. And let's head into Visual Studio. And as I said, the reason why we can do this is because the mechanics are already there, i.e. the ray casting is already in place for us to do it. it. Everything will appear as intended. We just need to change a couple of things and do a couple of different variables, and we've achieved our desired effect by using the similar um, code. So let's go down and let's establish what we need and what we don't need. So we don't need the audio source because there is no locked door involved on here. Um, we don't need the player and we don't need the camera. Now the bool we have here is uh, can open. So if can open is true, then you know we can do this. So yes, effectively we can kind of use that, but let's go down and get rid of some of the code that we also don't need. So we don't need to open the door. So this whole coroutine can disappear. Okay. And rather than can open, I don't think we should have that as can open. Let's have a bool, but let's call it um, can pick semicolon. So we can then say if can pick is true, then if we're pressing the E key, then we do something, which is here. So we need to keep this on mouse over section because we need it to say, you know, pick up candle. So uh, if we remember, uh, the action text says open door. Um, that says open. So we would say rather than open it, what do we want to do? We want to pick up. And here we can say candle because that's exactly what it is. So let's get rid of that coroutine because that coroutine no longer exists. It's not important to us. But what we want to do instead is remove the candle that is on the table and take and put it in our hand. So in order to do that, let's add some uh, variables here. So let's serialize field. And the first variable is going to be table handle. Uh, we probably won't. Uh, it's a game object, isn't it? We probably won't necessarily use this one. I just kind of want to illustrate how this is going to work, and then we'll piece it together properly. Uh, next thing, we'll also serialize field, and this one is also a game object, and this one will be hand handle semicolon. So when we press the E key, we're going to say this dot get component in spiky brackets box collider open close bracket dot enabled equals false and what this will do is it will stop us being able to continuously trigger this event next thing we need to do is say table candle dot set active and in brackets false finally we can say hand handle dot set active and in brackets 
false, semicolon, and save. So what we've effectively done here is reuse that script that we created to open the door, but use it for a slightly different method, i.e. picking up the candle. So if we head back into Unity now, and let's see, it's given us an error. Oh, of course. The reason it's given us an error is because the public class still thinks it's called Metal Door. We didn't change it to Candle, Pick, Up, and Save. So obviously, when we create a script, we've duplicated this. It still thinks it's called Metal Door, and it isn't. We've renamed it to Candle Pickup. So we need to make sure that the class name matches the exact same script name. So now we can head back into Unity. Uh, let's see. It's moaning here. Have we still got can open? In... Yes. Okay. So this can open should be can pick. So we didn't change these variables here, but that's the beauty of the console in Unity. It will tell you exactly where your errors lie. So now, as you see down here, no issues found. Perfect. So that means we can head back into Unity. It will compile. The errors will disappear. We need to assign um, a new cube to kind of cover our handle so we can pick it up. So we'll give this a second just to compile itself. There we go, errors have disappeared. And let's go to our candle on the table. And let's put a box collider around it. So game object, a 3D object, cube. And let's get the cube into the right kind of size and position. So let's have this as 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Is that too small? I feel it might be a bit too small, but it doesn't matter. Let's leave that as it is. Uh, let's turn off the mesh renderer because we don't want anybody to be able to see this cube. Uh, let's rename it to Candle Trigger. And then let's attach that candle pickup script to that trigger. So that cube that we've just inserted now has the script that we wrote on there. The next thing we need to do is add the table candle over here, and then the hand candle to there. And if I remember rightly, the text on screen is in our canvas, and it is. Uh, do you know what? I cannot remember what it is actually. Let's turn our canvas back on so we can see. Let's go to our metal door and just double check what it is. Uh, so text desk, there we are. So we this variable itself exists in both scripts, so we know we can use it in our candle trigger. So text desk, which is the description, goes there. And now if we press play, fingers crossed, we should be able to walk over to where our candle is Look at it and it will, ask, it will say, do we want to pick up? Obviously, we do want to pick it up because we want the script to uh, kind of show. There we go. So there's the candle. It does look a bit small. But there we go. Candle, pick up. E. Right. So now, what's gone wrong here? This candle should have been set on. Obviously, it should have been set on. So what has gone wrong in our script? Let's double check this. So, here we are. Hopefully you picked that up earlier. And candle should have been set as true. Let's resave that. And before we carry on, I want to go back to Unity. I want to increase the size of this candle. It's a bit small, isn't it, really? It is a, a little bit small. Come on, Unity. Hurry up. So, let's go to the candle. Let's increase the size so we can see it a bit better. 1.5, 1.5, 1 1.5. Do you think that's too big? Too little? I don't know. Let's see how this goes. Uh, let's bring that up to there. So hopefully this, this uh, cube now, the candle trigger, should cover all of the candle. And we should have this working perfectly now. We should be able to walk over, see the candle, pick it up, and it'll be in our hand. Obviously half of it worked because the candle disappeared off the table. Uh, so let's head over, candle, pick up. There we go. We now have the candle in our hand. So. One last thing I want to do, uh, this tutorial has gone on for ooh, 15 minutes already. Let's uh, let's wrap this up pretty quick. I don't like them going on too long. Uh, it, let's go to our lights, uh, the spotlights. Let's turn all those off, just to kind of illustrate how the game looks. Uh, let's press play. And we should be able to see that the room is much darker. 
and depending on what you want to do, how you you know, want it to be portrayed, you could have no lights and you just have the candle and you would walk around and obviously the candle would illuminate certain bits. Now obviously we worked with lighting uh, earlier in the series. If you want to manipulate the lights that's involved in the candle, that's entirely up to you. You know, it's your game at the end of the day. You should uh, create the game how you want it to be. Anyway, next tutorial, what we will do is we will add a spider web to the environment for us to burn with the candle. Uh, we'll add a few more models to our game as well to start filling up the space to make it look a bit more like a game now. Uh, so until that next tutorial, remember to subscribe, click the notification bell, stay up to date, and I'll see you next time.